All right, this is Cosmo. Welcome to part four, I think, four, uh, of the do-it-yourself DJI Inspire One style 3D printed drone project. And this is taking far longer than I actually thought it would when I started. I figured, oh, a week or two, I'll have this thing flying and we'll be out there having fun. Well, it's been a lot longer than that and I've spent more hours than I care to admit so far and I'm still not even close to being ready to fly so hopefully we can get there soon and in this video I'm going to show you some of the components that I've decided to put in this thing which will hopefully work um, but since I'm new at this it's all experimental so stick around. So I know I said there were some issues before and I didn't really elaborate as to what those issues were very much. Um, I've solved a lot of them now. I have the landing gear working pretty well. Um, I'll show you that here in a second. Um, hopefully it'll stay working, that's my only concern. Um, so here's where I'm at. Uh, so the battery is actually supposed to fit right there with this strap holding it up. And I mean, that, that'll work, but man, that's ugly. And it's, I don't know, but this shelf right here, it's supposed to be for the receiver and it's not very long uh, controller is supposed to be down here that's not very long either actually so I actually just got done printing an extended shelf and frame this frame was broken anyway so it had to go but it's been working fine for testing and here is the new frame and new shelf I actually had to make it black because I ran out of orange filament. I used the whole roll on this project already. Um, I wanted it to be black anyway. I just didn't have the black filament when I started. So uh, I extended these by 12 millimeters, um, which gives me just enough space, hopefully, to fit the stuff I need to in there. But it's still going to be interesting trying to get this all to fit because there is not much room in there. So some of the modifications I've done to this from what the stock... Um, models call for. Uh, you can see there's this white piece here. It's the frame reinforcement. Uh, someone designed a bigger one. The, the original one was really skinny and flimsy and mine actually didn't handle the threaded inserts in there. It broke so I printed this one and it's awesome. Um, I'm using a quarter inch threaded rod instead of the M5 size that it originally calls for. Um, there are some nylon bushings that I printed inside of these arms to keep them steady because they were very wobbly before and that's that's no good. So um, my servo um, limit switch, my limit switches for my servo are actually hardwired into the servo itself, so I don't need any programming whatsoever. When it gets to the top, it automatically turns the motor off. And same thing when it gets to the bottom, so I don't have to worry about programming that or using up channels on the controller or anything else. Nor do I have to worry about breaking it while I'm testing because I don't have to scramble to turn the motion off when it gets close to the top. Um, let's see, what else have I done to this? Servo cap is not the original, it's another one that somebody else designed. So this thing's already full of parts that are modified from the originals. Um, But it's getting close. It needs electronics in here now. And that's what this video is about. Actually, I lied. Before I can uh, put any electronics in here, I need to swap out this broken short frame for the new one that I just made and then try to start fitting stuff in there. So, stick around. Oh wait, you're already here. Okay, stay here. Don't go anywhere. Just sit there, watch this. Hopefully it'll be interesting. I'll demonstrate all the electric components all hooked up, even if they don't make it in here yet. Because um, it's pretty cool stuff, actually. And I'm pretty impressed with how well it works and how easy it is when I don't even know what I'm doing, so. Woohoo! Yeah, so before anybody asks, uh, modifying STL files isn't really that fun, actually. Um, I end up using several different programs in order to do this. Um, I took the original STL file, um, used Mesh Mixer and the Plain Cut tool, to chop it right here. Then I in inserted another 
cube the same size as this. It's, it's 12 millimeters, slid this other piece back, lined it all up nicely. Uh, you can't even tell I did it actually. It turned out awesome. Uh, but that was easy. Uh, other things wouldn't be so easy. Now yeah, one more thing I forgot. Uh, this hole in the bottom, I modified the size of it to fit the bushing that I got, which is sized for the quarter inch threaded rod that I'm using. So this hole's a little bigger than the standard one. Uh, so hopefully the bearing will fit in there, but I already checked. It doesn't just fall in, so that's good. I'll just need to trim it down a little and force it. All right, so here's a view of that extended frame. I've got the brass threaded inserts installed as well as the bearing for the landing gear, servo, and threaded rod. Here are some of the parts that I've broken or had to replace with other parts since this project started. Here is the Tyrannus radio that we're going to be using for this thing. And we got a 5,000 milliamp 4S battery from Hobby King as well as these particular motors, which will hopefully do the job. And here is the radio got directly from 3D Robotics. Okay, so I've made some progress. Uh, I got my new frame put on. I actually ended up making a second uh, receiver shelf. Um, extended it even further um, and decided to put the controller there um, which is the APM clone uh, called Arducopter um, I got some of that industrial velcro like stuff that locks in place um, so the stuff doesn't move and but you can move it around if you need to um, so I have the copter board here in the middle shelf um, the receiver and telemetry radio on the bottom um, which all nicely and easily plugs right in to this controller um, GPS on the top even though this thing is huge at least it's out of my way um, found out I couldn't power my servo from this configuration so I had to get a BEC which is here attached to the uh, battery monitor and it turns out the battery is supposed to hang from the back like this um, which was news to me since you know there were no instructions or anything or even you know other people's examples to go by at that point so things are looking up this thing might actually fly soon okay so I got most of the electronics wired up um, so it's time to transform into nerd mode and get out the laptop and show you how this software works BAM okay Let's do this. Okay, so here we have Mission Planner 1.3.19. Um, I'm running Arducopter 3.2.1. And my laptop is connected to the radio here, which is connected to the radio inside of there. But as you can see, that's the only thing that's connected to it. It's not connected via USB or anything else, so. These radios are pretty slick. So I hit connect. Okay, so now it's connected up, actually. I'm sorry about that. You couldn't see the screen, but it connects and then gets all the parameters from the flight controller to make sure it knows what the current settings are before it changes anything. So we just go to flight data here. You can see, well, you can see where I'm at actually because the GPS is plugged in. Um, it'll show you right there on the map. I'll move this over a little bit. Turn this thing. All right, so there's my house on the map. Uh, you can actually see if I pick the copter up and turn it. You can see it's compass updating, telling you which way it's pointed. 
pretty cool stuff. These flight controllers are amazing, actually. None of this kind of thing existed last time I was into RC stuff. The technology has come a long way. Long way. And it's only going to get cooler. So. You know, uh, this Tyrannus, never used this before. Um, however, I was playing with it for a while the other night and got it wired up to allow I thought it would work then I realized that I couldn't power my servo from this uh, board directly so that came today got everything soldered up and now actually on the first try I was able to flip the switch and it worked That doesn't sound really good though. It sounded like it was rubbing in there. It worked better earlier, I swear. So I'm getting kind of concerned about this servo speed here. Uh, you know, the flight time on this thing's probably already going to be bad enough because it's so heavy with all this plastic, but if I have to spend two minutes of that just to raise and lower the landing gear, that's, that's, that's not so good. Um, Okay, so it seems that it's actually the servo running in 6 volts. For some reason, it doesn't like that. So I changed it back to 5, and it seems to be better. So let's, let's try this now. Yeah, much better. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Hey, keep in mind, this is the first copter I've ever built, so don't go copying what I'm doing until you've seen the video that proves that what I'm doing work, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm having fun, again, now that I've made it past some of the parts I was stuck on. So I was originally gonna use these Bear Hug ESCs. Um, I had got them already, and they've been sitting there in my pile of parts, and then when I got close to ready to use them, I went and did a little bit more research and found out for the past few weeks since I had ordered them, people have been having tons of problems, uh, crashing copters, those things going up in smoke, all four at once, just horrible, horrible things, so I decided to not use them at all. Um, didn't even want to waste my time soldering them up because it looked like a hassle, so I ordered something else, um, which will be here in a few days, so lucky for you, you don't have to wait a few days. Um, through the magic of editing, they'll appear here instantly, here in a second. So, one, two, three, ESCs. All right, check it out. The speed controllers are here. Time to get these suckers soldered in place and get going. Okay, so I got one of the speed controllers wired up. I'm gonna try to buzz that motor, uh, hopefully, and see uh, if it works. So, let's do this. Okay, you're all hooked up. I need to click this test button. It spins. You know what that means. That means now I gotta do the other three. All right, all four of the ESCs are wired up. I'm ready to calibrate them and test spin each motor. Um, two of them are wired backwards, of course, because they spin opposite directions from the other two. So that's a kind of an important thing to know as you're soldering or before you're soldering. All right, I got the ESCs calibrated. And just to prove it. That makes a fantastic noise. All right, so here it is, ready to take off. Uh, take a good look at it, because it probably won't ever look this pretty again once it goes outside, so. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for for the last month or two, however long it's been. Time to give this thing a whirl.
I'm excited. Can you tell? Okay, I would say 60% chance that this thing kind of gets in the air, but shakes horribly and needs a lot of adjustment and tuning before it flies nicely. 10% uh, chance it just flies away, never to be seen again. 10% chance that everything's fine and it's awesome. And what's that leave me? 20%. Uh, 20% chance that I crash and break the hell out of it on the first go. Only one way to find out. I missed something. Make that 15% chance that it crashes and burns. 5% uh, chance it goes out of control and kills us all. In a horrible carbon fiber propeller accident. The likes of which the world has never seen. 5%. Mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn. Yeah, I'm standing in the way. I think it's gonna jump back and hit me. Oh dear God! You gotta burst off the ground. Don't take it easy. There you go, dude. Oh, oh, oh no! That was flying dude, it was backwards. Flying. It was flying. <laughs> and I just broke it in half. Twenty percent chance broken. So kick ass. We just gotta strengthen it up, dude. I saw it trying to hover there. It was really trying. Good job, dude. This is still a step. It's a good step. Everybody crashes the first time. Awesome stuff. Good job, guys. Actually, I only broke one piece. Yep. Proud of the dad here. I've already broken two of before. Kick ass, man. That was worth the race over here. Dude, that's so. And there it is. 3D printed arm joints shattered. I got a video of it here too, dude, flying. Well, I guess that 15% uh, chance that it would just crash ended up being the case. Uh, for some reason, I'm not even mad, I guess. I kind of expected that to happen. Uh, but it did fly for a second, so that's cool. I'm not sure why it went so crazy sideways. I tried to bring it back with the stick, but it wasn't having that, so... I lowered the throttle a little too fast, I guess, and it couldn't handle dropping from that height. Um, both arm joints just snapped in half, and the front landing gear bearing holder also cracked, so I'm making new parts. I printed these today while I was at work. Uh, solid PLA, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they'll be a little stronger than that uh, ABS that broke. Um, it seemed to be some kind of layer bonding issue that I'm having with that filament where their stuff is just splitting on the layers. Um, I'm not giving up on this damn thing yet. Uh, I was tempted to just rip the electronics out and hang the carcass of it on the wall in the garage and move on to something else, but I want to see this thing fly, even if it ends up being kind of crappy and I just build something else and use that instead. But Got to see it work, and I'm sure you all want to see it work too, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this, so uh, stay tuned for the next part. Hopefully it won't be too long and I can avoid stupid mistakes the second time. Uh, maybe. We'll see. See ya.